so I'm awful at like remembering like current details of say someone's name or something like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But if you notice as you Steve, get old, Steve, nice to meet you. Yeah, it's nice to meet you, Steve. <laughs> What I see realistically occurring is that it's going to get much worse before it gets yeah. better. And what, what I mean by much worse is we're going to see a huge increase in, in, there's basically going to be, in my opinion, a mental health crisis that is going to overwhelm public mm. health. Just, uh, just the, 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 the general population, you mean? Or, yeah, 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 just the, from, from guys who are using anabolic mm. steroids through any understanding of what it's doing to their neurochemistry it tremble yeah, on it's very side, tremble yeah. on the side you know yeah we're looking at you know 15 years time mental health services being overwhelmed with with guys that just are either suffering with anabolic steroid induced hyperganadism mm. where you know they're, they're basically their dopamine levels of their brain aren't right so they're, they're not yeah. functioning mm -hmm. correctly even though hormonally they're 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 healthy yeah they don't respond anymore to their neurotransmitters i get a lot of consultations about this yeah and, and, the, and the, it, the really bad thing about this is that once that sort of the neurons have a gated voltage like an electrical potential I mean, that electrical potential is matched the neuron releases the neurotransmitter mm -hmm. towards the other synapse when that electrical potential goes really high mm -hmm. from repeated androgen stimulation or repeated dopamine stimulation, you, you arrive at an aspect whereby that person just doesn't get any enjoyment out of normal activity because yeah, it's the, the, enough. the neurons never get stimulated to release enough dopamine. So there's never an effect on the other side. So all of a sudden they mm -hmm. have low libido. They can't be bothered doing anything. They don't have any drive. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, you know, they're going to their GP and saying, you know, I've got no libido, I've got no sexual interest, I've got all these sort of dysfunctions. Mm -hmm. And they're looking at their HPTA blood markers and going, well, it looks you know, fine. Your, te your testosterone is 25 nanomolar, you know, you're yeah. in the middle range, your LH and FSH, everything's good. And they just don't realize that, you know, even the state of social media playing into that. Yeah, I agree. Dopamine yeah. stimulation on your brain every day is, is really driving you further and further away <laughs> that, you know, it, when you sit and you logically tell someone about this occurring with their brain chemistry uh -huh. and then they're asking you like, how do I fix this? And, and you sort of like social media detox. It's, it's effectively, you have to abstain from everything dopamine driving within your, yeah. your current environment. And, and that it means it might know, even be music, you know, it's, yeah, it's, you know, anything that, brings trill to your life you effectively have to live a boring life until those neurons fall back to their mm. normal potential and then there's one of the asking, reasons yeah go ahead go ahead, go ahead i was going to say they're asking on a time period and that relaxation that neuron could take one year two years three years we, mm. we don't know so all of a sudden you have guys that are feeling this way looking at when they were on cycle and saying okay well when my androgen levels were high i felt great so i'm going back using again yeah. And and it just plays into again that sort of mental psychology of maybe they're not physically depending, but they're, no, but they're mentally. They're, mentally. Yeah, they're yeah. driving a, a neurochemical imbalance that you're only resolving with their use. So I so, think like in 20 years' time, there's gonna probably be an influx of I guess mental health issues where we have like cognitive deficits from guys who have used compounds that have neurally damaged them. So we're gonna see probably an uprise in potentially mm. pre-Alzheimer's where guys are in their, you know, early forties and can't remember, you know, minor Because spatial. of the amyloid, amyloid plaque buildup? Or, uh, yes. Or yeah. So yeah, in terms of amyloid plaque buildup or towards neurotoxicity, so there's not enough mm. neural connections within the brain. Mm. We're, we're just going to see guys that really undervalued how these compounds worked in their brain. Yeah. Mm. And that effect is only probably going to be seen in the next sort of 15 to 20 years. I think so. Yeah. Because of course, you know, with social media and the information that's out there, I think a lot of people think that they're ready for steroids sooner because they've yeah. done a decent amount of research, but not enough. I mean, I was researching for 10 years. And if I look back now on what I knew starting with steroids 12 years ago, right from 26 to 38, it's night and day. 
Yeah. But at that time, I felt I, I knew way more than anybody at my gym. Now I could argument, you know, put everybody under the table with what I researched back then. Now it's now it's way more, and I still have way more to learn. But I think now it's the the influx of information on social media and membership sites and wherever else, you know, the access to the information. I think people are think that they're ready earlier than they really are. Yeah. which could maybe lead to more issues or more exposure to more people over the next 10 or 15 years. Have you ever looked into compounds that increase brain derived neurotropic factor or neurogenesis? Because I do feel that it might be able to mitigate some of these uh, psychological issues and, and neurotransmitter imbalance that steroids can induce. Yeah. I've looked, I've looked briefly at some of them, obviously what people need to understand is once a, once a neuron is dead, it's dead. Mm, so you're never, you're never, you're, you're never regrowing another neuron. And, and basically what ends up happening is like what you're saying there, um, neurogenesis is really, you know, that neuron decides to branch out and make new neural connections to other neurons so that information is processed faster. So if that neuron mm. is touching, you know, five other neurons, it's able to pass its information off okay. quicker. So you might not have a higher number of, neurons overall but you'll have a higher amount of connections so that mm -hmm. the, the speed of data transmittance is compensated from the neural connections as opposed to right, for the lack of neurons that are not present <laughs> yeah yeah I, I guess the only the only issue there obviously then is with with obviously neurogenesis and the branching out it's like you're running cables into another line it's not that there's more um I guess neural vesicles that are able mm -hmm. to release neurotransmitters. So again, your neurotransmitter synthesis drops with the neurons that you're killing. You're just able mm -hmm. to send that information quicker down different paths of your brain. Ah, so, yeah, you're circumventing it. Yeah. So, so neurogenesis is a very important thing, obviously, in terms of then offsetting neurotoxicity and killing the mm -hmm. neuron. But again, it, it comes down to neurogenesis is is based off plasticity of the neurons themselves. So if you're not mm. actively engaging in neural plastic events where you're trying to make force these connections between you had to learn something new, do, do something learn, intelligent the, with it. Yeah. Mm. Effectively that neural plasticity of where you've made these new branch connections just really doesn't do anything extra. Right. So I guess they're, they're very useful. Um, you know, even the simplest of like, even if you were to go to like supplementation of like lion's mane or yeah, mm -hmm. the, the copa manieri or any of these sort of nootropic based herbs that elicit neurogenesis, you, you're still, you're still not increasing the overall numbers of neurons. So I think at some point in time, there's, there is probably going to be some form of cognitive decline even mm -hmm. though you're keeping up with neurogenesis and making those new branch connections, you're not overriding the fact that there's less neurons in your brain. Right. So you're probably just like with, with many of the ancillaries that we're taking in bodybuilding, you're masking it long enough for you to continue to make it worse in the long run. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's, <laughs> you know, and I, one of the simplest things that guys should be starting to pay attention to is, you know, I'm often, you know, and again, again, it, it, it can be, causative or it can be just pure coincidence but i'm awful at like remembering like current details of say someone's name or something like that yeah mm -hmm, yeah but if you notice as you steve, get old steve nice to meet you yeah it's nice to meet you steve. <laughs> <laughs> you know you get you get to a stage where like you're forgetting where you put your keys down you're forgetting like uh -huh. silly things that it, if you're i guess i'm i'm probably a little different i've got like a photographic memory so I can mm. sort of remember silly things like that. But if you if you notice that you're not able to remember where you're where you've put something that you maybe would have had 15 minutes ago, your short term memory oh, is starting yeah, to right. mm. it's starting to decline where you're you're not able to remember directions correctly, or you're not able to put yourself sort of at a moment in time in terms mm. of your memories, that could be an early sign that you're heading towards this cognitive decline. Yeah. And and giving you like a, an insight that okay, well. Maybe if I keep taking this compound, I'm going to actually make myself so much worse. Right. That again, we're all worried about we're all worried about heart attacks and dying from stuff like that. But like, how many people are worried about being a, I guess a, a cognitive deficient person who has 
Alzheimer's that's just basically yeah. ex existing in their body because the, the, the brain can't function correctly anymore. And you can see that with some of the pros from the 90s who really pushed, you know, that early period to catch up with Ronnie. You know, they're, they're cognitively behind to the point you would almost compare them with boxers who get punched in the head a lot. It's, it, it's alarming. Yeah, it's kind of alarming, you know, and the, the, the neuro inflammation that comes, you know, with, with training to failure even and the, and the oxidative stress, you know, that's completely overlooked. You know, we now understand that, you know, the conversion of testosterone into estradiol is neuroprotective, right? We don't get the excitotoxicity of testosterone, which yeah. you can't really mitigate from trimbolone or other compounds because they don't aromatize. And then it's, it's such a double... A double it short almost because we do understand the organ stress and all that stuff but we don't really understand the neurotoxicity so maybe and and who who goes in for an mri on the brain and could you even see it yep you know it's um yeah there's, there's a lot more left to learn so you think in 10 or 15 years a lot of guys are going to have some uh, cognitive decline and i think there's going to be an, an overwhelming capacity of guys that are going to present with you know, pre Alzheimer's with mental mm. deficits from silly use of, of stuff like neurotoxic drugs, like Nandrolone, Trembolone in their, in their yeah. early twenties for a significant period of time. So maybe by the time they get to their thirties, they realize, okay, well, what I done was silly. Well, that damage is, you know, it's too late. And then by the time they get to 40, that mental deficit is starting to appear in their day-to-day mm. -day life that, you know, at that point, then, if someone has sort of pre Alzheimer's or pre build up of amyloid plaque, mm -hmm. they're, they're going to be at a, a case whereby their dependency on the medical system is, mm -hmm. is going to be long-term. Like there, yeah. there is no, there is no reverse. There's no, there's no way of sitting down and saying to them, okay, well, it's managing, managing what you have left. <laughs> yeah. You know, we can't, you know, implement this therapy and you're going to be magically fixed. You know, your, yeah. your whole sort of, life strategy now is to preserve what mental capacity you have mm -hmm. and from then on um you know really try and keep up with even brain training or you know supplementation mm -hmm. to keep the, the oxidative stress of the brain down it, it just to me we will see this big spike in, in mental health in the next sort of mm -hmm. 15 years and hopefully it it's enough to sort of go mainstream that the younger generation see, okay, well, mm -hmm. sort of what we're seeing now with guys who abused recreational drugs and we're starting yeah. to see, mm -hmm. we're starting to see as a society, okay, well, you know, back in the nineties, there was all these mad raves and they were taking, you know, a, a copious amounts of ecstasy. Yeah, and, I've, and, I've, I've <laughs> been there. <laughs> NMDA. And, you know, not, not for experimentation or whatever, but, mm guys who then sort of got sucked into that reality oh yeah those in, yeah they, they, they're, are, they're brain dead almost you know, who are, you know who are, are, guys that do that for 10 15 years back in holland you know from that, my age and, and they never stopped you know i at least i, I did it a couple times and then i stopped at 21 you know you that, graduate and you're done with that life yeah but <laughs> but just you guys to continue with that and and man it's it's alarming you know i go back yeah. to holland you run the, to them in the street and you realize like whoa is this the same person you know 